Okay, so this was posted yesterday, and this was like kind of on the after hours when we got this information. And everyone, and I saw all the comments down below, I, I usually read everything. And everyone's saying quantitative easing is back. Just look. Now, we're going to talk about this pretty in depth in this video. We're going to go over what's happening on these key levels. If you watch yesterday's video, what did we say here on the charts? This is the NASDAQ. We said the key level we're watching is back to 12.8 to 12.9. We came right into that zone. I mean, just go watch yesterday's video. Do not trust me. Go watch the video. Okay, don't, again, don't, don't trust me. Just go back, fact check what I'm saying. Now, a more interesting behavior happened here. And there's going to be a lot of trades that I'm liking for the setup coming into this following week. So I think we need to dive right in. But before we get into that content, I've asked you to do two things. Consider liking, consider subscribing. Every single day I make videos for you so you are prepared as you can see. And I try to stay as unbiased as possible. I'll show you the, winning, the winners. I'll show you the losers. Yesterday, I said I, I believe this is a bull trap. Believe that it is. I showed you I was down on my Tesla position, right? I try to be as honest as possible. So it's there. Make sure you check it out. Consider liking, consider subscribing. Also, the newsletter, just so you know, this will be dropping on Sunday morning. Uh, absolutely free. This is last week's newsletter going over every key level, everything we were watching, everywhere we expected us to bounce, everything in between, went over tests, went over everything. So it's all there for you. It's all absolutely free. The link is down below. Make sure you check it out. And as you can see, we're not selling you anything. There's there's nothing there to sell you, right? So it's just absolutely free. We just try to get more and more content out there for you. Um, but let's get into it. Okay, so this is the first thing we're gonna go over, right? This is like the premise of the video. A lot of what people have questions about is, is there quantitative easing, easing can't, can't speak right now, occurring in the market, right? So everyone, we just post random things. This is why I always say social media is the worst thing in the, ever for investors. QE is back. 300 billion in assets added to the Fed's balance sheet this week. Awesome, right? And worth mentioning, it took out about five months of work of tightening, which is more bearish for me, right? Uh, and as you can see, we just shot up. There's no context. There's nothing what's happening here. When the news was right in front of us, it was, it was so easily sitting in front of us right here with what happened, okay? So what happened and where is this 300 billion, right? And we know this is 300 billion because you go up 300 billion. Therefore, we just do some simple math. Fed Reserve lent 300 billion, right? It's the same money. So Fed, nearly half of the 300 billion, 143, went to holding companies, major banks, Silicon Valley, Signature National Bank, triggering widespread alarm in financial markets. The Fed did not identify the banks that received the other half or say how many of them did so because they don't want you to, they don't really want you to look at really what's happening, right? But it's there. The holding companies for the two failed banks were set up by the FDIC, which have taken over both banks. <clears throat> the money that was borrowed was used to pay for their uninsured depositors, the bonds, both banks, and the FDIC has guaranteed the repayment of loans, the Fed said. What loans? The $300 billion. And this, again, is where things get good. Okay. So what is happening here? What's going on? And they also go in to tell you that we have some big banks that are, that are loaning out money as well. What's happening now, giving you a visual, we've gone over QE and just to give you a better visual of what it is. Okay. And to show that this isn't really traditional QE or even it isn't even QE in a sense, right? So the Fed, what they'll do is they'll increase the money supply and lower long-term interest rates. Are we lowering long-term rates? Pretty sure we're going to raise them in like three days. Okay, next up. Occurs when the Fed buys long-term securities to boost the economy. Now, this is interesting. I'm pretty positive we don't consider loans to banks for bailouts a security. It's an asset, but it's not a security. Equities or bonds is typically what you're having. Giving you a visual to give you so a better understanding. So you're thinking, well, Tyler, uh, I think it still is. Well, uh, let me tell you right now. Can they sell that loan? Well, technically, they could sell that debt to someone else. But um, based on the deal they have, they could not. Uh, so you're seeing them selling their equities, bonds, et cetera, just down, 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 and spike up. Okay, so that's where we're at. So understand where we're at. Giving you a, bit, a little bit of a visual, and I've had to record this a few times because the mic is going AWOL, so I am sorry. Uh, but we're going to jump into this really quick. So you have three little sections. You have your Fed, your big banks, your small banks. Think XLF, think KRE. Now, this is where everything starts to get juicy. The Fed, we're like, look, we're going to make 300 bill. Congratulations, King Leonidas. They're the only thing that can protect us. Awesome. From there, 
half of that, it's gone. So 150 basically, 143, it's gone. The rest went here to big banks. And this is why when you go back to that article, they say, we're not going to really say who it's going to, but we're going to tell you who it's going to. So what they did is they loaned out the rest of this money to the other big banks. Okay. So they, they loaned it out to these big banks. Now, big banks here, what are they doing? They got this with a very low rate. Okay. You can go look at the rate for yourself. It's minimal. Then these guys now have 150 bill, right? And they're not using it for themselves. They're back loaning this out, right? That's why we saw FRC a day ago. What did they get? $30 billion. Pack W, go look for yourself. $10 billion, right? That's where this money is going. So figuratively, they only have like 110 left if that's already all gone. Okay. And that's what they're doing. And this is at what? 4%. They're going to loan this and they're going to make money off of this while they do it. They're going to make 4%, the big banks are. And they're going to pay uh, the initial capital back to the Fed which also too is insured. Remember that. That's a very important part. This is insured money guaranteed by the FDIC. Now, now, now we, we dive a little bit deeper and then we say, okay, well you gave $30 billion to FRC. They, sh they should be good, right? No. So FRC announces today, First Republic Bank plans to raise cash by selling shares privately. Interesting. Very interesting that we didn't get an exact number of what they're trying to raise. The bank shares are down. They didn't really give an exact number. They said they're going to be doing it. Lorton, just so you know, large banks injected $30 billion already into FRC on Thursday, but obviously it wasn't enough. They need more. So we have these loans going out. It's not enough. That being said, they're like, screw it. We need to dilute just a little bit more, boys. We need, we need more. Squeeze the lemon, if you will, right? That's where we're at. Back W, we haven't anything from them. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Now, we have big banks, too, talking about this. This was this past week, and no one talked about this one. Wells Fargo files a 10, basically 10 billion mixed securities shelf offering. Basically, they're, they're going to dilute, not shares, but securities, warrants, units, purchasing contracts, guarantees. They're diluting to raise more capital. And this is where things get interesting. What do we know about Jamie Dimon, right? JP Morgan CEO, the GOAT, if you will, as of late. He's been calling for this. He's been saying markets are going to get smacked. They're going to get crashed. It's it's beautiful, right? I believe, and we talked about this in Discord a little bit last night. I believe that big banks, they're loaning this money out. That's FDI insured. They don't really care. They're like worst case scenario, we make a few bucks off this, whatever. I think we start seeing smaller banks start to get smacked, get hit. Why? Because based on what happened, based on what the Fed did, based on this right here, I think this is all you need to see to understand that there most likely will not be a rate cut or even a pause, right? Hi, I think there's like a, a 0.03511119% chance, right? That's Tyler's logarithmic scale. So, you know, it's, it's not going to happen. That's why they did this, right? If not, they could have just started lo lowering cutting rates. But what does that do if they do that? If they do, if they, if they start cutting rates and pausing, it sets us back in inflation. It runs the risk of becoming entrenched. And that's where things start to really get dangerous. Okay. I think we saw the dangers of a bank run possibly happening recently. I think the fed wants nothing along those lines. So they have to, they have to do what they're doing right now. And this is ultimately just the, the path going forward. In my opinion. Okay. My opinion. Now, before I go into some of the stocks, I'm liking, we're going to go into that. I'm just telling you, this is the biggest deal to me right now. Okay. And I want to encourage you before we go into those charts and things I'm liking. Don't trust this social media narrative. Don't trust these people out there. All they really care about are these clicks guys. And I get it. I like the clicks, right? I, I, I make clickbaity thumbnails. I um, have some funny tweets here and there. But at the end of the day, I can come on this channel and I know that I'm being completely 100% transparent and honest with you guys. I'm not lying. I, I, if I ever do lie, if I misspeak, I come out and I clearly say it. I'm not saying that I'm better than these people, but you need to understand the narrative that's being pushed. Why is there no mention of this in here? QE's back. It's Traditional QE for any normal person believes this is what it is. But why not? Do three seconds of a Google search and explain what's happening. Because the truth sometimes isn't as interesting. 
right? Bad news isn't really good to hear. Okay. That's my opinion. That's what I'm covering. That's where I'm going moving forward. I'm going to mention these trades I'm going over as well, but that's the main goal. Sorry, I had to like redo this whole part because like the audio got messed up. So it sounds like an end of the video, but let's get to the charts. Now, let's get to some of these charts. We'll have an educational video coming out tomorrow. So I don't know what I'm going to talk about yet. Honestly, not looking forward to it right now. So we come up to our level. We're getting rejected. Awesome. Cool. What could be better, right? Personally, I'm not watching too much of the indexes because if I look at the indexes, in my opinion, there's a total disconnect across the board. What do I mean by that? Um, I think it's really simple. We can see that ES futures are still getting hammered. They were basically red on the day, even though NQ still finished net positive or green on the day. Going over to Dow, looking at Dow, again, red, red, red. Dow getting rejected at a major level as well. Previous swing lows there. Um, so I just don't know how you can be bullish here. Um, yes, NQ looks good, but I, I still am betting heavily on this being a bear trap. So you're saying, Tyler, what are you doing? Now, yesterday I told you about some of the plays I like. Um, obviously, Tesla is my baby. It's my... Um, the crim daily crim, if you will. I love it. Um, I told everyone as well here on the channel, um, an entry to get into puts if you wanted them was around 186 to 187. Your previous swing lows, you bounced right up to that. Um, yesterday, it's actually is today, this morning, and then as well as yesterday, um, and then you dip back down. Uh, I still think you look great here on Tesla. I, I'm looking for the breakdown. You have, again, it's not a head and shoulders. It's really, it's, it's not, but it looks really, really good. If you invert the chart, it looks more like an inverted cup and handle, which arguably is better than anything I could ask for from the head and shoulder side of you. So <clears throat> that's what I'm watching for there. That's what I'm looking at there. Uh, Tesla, favorite play to the downside. Absolutely love it. Now, semiconductors. Um, man, this is kind of crazy. So semiconductors got price target raises like across the board today. I think NVIDIA's price target raised like to 280 or something. And they just shot up this morning. So you went to like highs of like 265, 264. You filled that gap from way back here on the daily time frame. You look really good. Um, in my opinion, again, uh, my statement here has remained a constant on all semiconductors. I think you're going to get a great opportunity. Uh, but the biggest thing for me, okay, the biggest thing for me here is not rushing semiconductors. There's no need to rush in any place. I've been saying this for the past like three to four days, but I think patience is your best friend here. Giving you a quick visual, right? I, I love to do this because I think sometimes we, we, as humans, me included, uh, obviously, right? Sometimes you're like, Tyler, are, are you human? I don't know how you, you do this day in and out. I don't know either, man, sometimes. But as humans, what is something that's really important to know <clears throat> when we're trading? Where do we make our money? Okay, again, I, 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 I can't harp on this enough. This is more the education side of the channel. Do we make our money in the chop sideways? Do we make it up here in the chop? Oh, we don't. We, we make it on the breakdowns, on the breakouts, or the, the massive breaks of ma major levels. That's where you focus and make your money. Now, NQ, you're getting a little bit of push up, but if you look at ES, there's no push up, right? We, we can see it's really it's just like a bear flag pushing back up right now. It's my opinion. It's not ideal. It's not pretty. Don't love it. Okay. Going into ES though, giving you a visual of where we are with the daily 100 SMA and the weekly. You're right on top of it to end of the week. You break back below this. I anticipate downside and obviously slipping back down to our massive demand. If you're wondering where this ES demand is, zoom out. You can obviously see it's right there at the 38, like 670 down to like 37.9. You break below 37.9 on ES, I believe you make new lows on ES and across the board on the market. My opinion, um, do your own DD, not financial advice, but I love it. Um, next up as well, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of these banks and a lot of people keep asking and I think it's just important that I cover this um, for the sake of peep, the viewer, right? Um, I'm not telling anyone to short these, um, but I think there's danger on, on, on the lurk for FRC, PACW, WAL, a lot of these banks, right? Uh, we were talking about XLF and KRE a lot. KRE is probably the safest name for downside, in my opinion. Uh, but when you look at these names, I think you need to be cautious, right? A lot of people are FOMOing into these, trying to play the quick swing to the upside. And you can make money. Awesome. Uh, I'll pray for you. I hope you you will get rich or die trying. Shout out 50 Cent. Uh, but right now, uh, I think you look terrible. I think... Again, there's issues here. If we have to dilute, there are issues. If you $30 billion isn't enough to help you, to keep you stable, 
there is an issue. Okay. So I'm going to continue to say that and I'm going to scream it. I'm going to keep screaming it. So be careful on these names down here. As far as stocks that I'm liking, there's no big names I'm loving because you're getting decent movement to every side. Like for instance, pointing out Microsoft, you've been going like just parabolic tech has literally kept the market alive. Okay. But the reason I love Tesla is despite all this movement, Tesla continues to show weakness. We want to, if we're trying to short, we want to focus on shorting weak names, names that don't have strength to continue going, right? That's what I want to do. I want to attack the dog that's barely walking, that's limping. I know everyone's like, well, Tyler, that's not really hunting, right? You, you should go after the prime animal. Well, we're not hunting, people. This is about money, okay? It's about money. This isn't about feeling good. This isn't about, oh, I made the best play. I got the top. No, don't care. There's a reason you come to this channel and you see the risk to reward, the risk management, because we take trades that are in our favor. That's why I think Tesla is just like my favorite play right now. If he gets over 186, 187, I'll easily cut the trade. Uh, but for right now, still love it. I still think Fed rates are coming this coming week. Be careful. Favorite plays out there. Have a go, traders.